the sights and the sounds are unmistakable. Ask anyone who lives in Teleco Village if they've noticed a building boom for new houses. The answer is invariably yes. This program is produced by the volunteers of Teleco Village Broadcasting. It's very clear that our beautiful community, surrounded by the lakes and rivers and mountains of eastern Tennessee, is in very high demand as a place where people want to live. Shannon Foster Boleyn is the president of the Knoxville Area Association of Realtors, and she says a lot of people are moving to Tennessee from somewhere else. Literally, I would almost say a migration to Tennessee from people in California, New York, Illinois, Michigan, Florida, um, just lots and lots of people moving from out of state. Demand for homes, both existing and new construction, are climbing sharply. Inventory is the lowest we've ever seen it. We're talking about a balanced market is usually six months of inventory, and currently we're sitting at less than a month of inventory in our entire MLS. And in some price categories, it's even less than that. So it is unprecedented. John Cook is a well-known local home builder and serves as the president of the Home Builders Association of Greater Knoxville. There are a lot of drivers for why the market is doing what it's doing. Some of them are tied to interest rates. Interest rates are at an all-time just crazy historic low. Um, so money is very cheap. But in Teleco Village, those interest rates aren't as much of a factor in the housing boom as it might be elsewhere. That's because in many cases, the buyers are selling their expensive homes up north or out west, and consequently, they have most, if not all, of the cash needed to buy a house here. The folks that are moving to Teleco Village are coming from other areas. Most of them are moving here from states like California, Illinois, uh, Colorado, uh, just a you know, Midwest, other Midwestern states. And so their home is selling because of the low interest rates, and that enables them to retire and to move to wherever it is that they want to move to. Sue Newman is a former resident of Teleco Village who moved to Arizona last year to be closer to her family. She says when she sold her house, she started the day not knowing she was going to sell at all and had a contract by the end of that first day. The day that I sold my house, I woke up that morning, I had no plans on either selling or selling a house or buying another one and uh, circumstances just made it all happen. Uh, it, was, it was definitely kismet. Realtors are working with out-of-town clients who are eager to buy and the shortage of inventory makes this a very hot market for people like Sue Newman who want to sell. That morning I got this phone call saying from that a realtor wanted to show my house. And uh, I called her and I said, you know, my house isn't ready to be shown. She said, well, I have a, a couple that loves Teleco Village. They're coming in from Virginia and they're going to be here today. They're on the road as we speak. Um, they'll understand if you're not quite ready to, to sell it, but they want to see your house. Realtor Shannon Foster Boleyn makes the case that even in a superheated seller's market, the need for a realtor's expertise is still crucial especially navigating the terms of a contract that include important things above and beyond the price tag. Real estate professionals can guide you through the process in a way that the average homeowner doesn't know how to do. That's, that's why it's a career and that's why we have a profession is because of our knowledge, our expertise, our ability to get you um, to the closing table. And so while you can put your house on the market and sell it really quickly, you are likely not going to get the same um, price that you would by listing with an agent, and you're definitely not going to get the same terms. She says this is a historically great time to sell a house, though for many potential sellers, they have a big and difficult question they have to ask themselves. How do I sell a house uh, if I don't have something to buy? And so we've encouraged a lot of our clients to make some partnerships with their lenders to look at alternatives you know, do you want to live in a short-term rental for a while till we find something? Do you want to do a bridge loan? You know, explore the options that are out there. Um, because if you're a seller, uh, I've never seen it a better time to sell. So, um, and if you're a buyer, 
historically low rates again. So I think there's a win for everybody. Um, you just have to be ready for maybe a little longer process than some are accustomed to previously. For Sue Newman, even a chance visit by her neighbors on the day she decided to sell her house yielded an unexpected purchase offer. The neighbor said, don't sell it until you hear from us because we wanna make an offer on your house. And about 4.30 or five o'clock, I came back. My neighbors walked in the house uh, with a contract uh, for the $500,000. And um, I said, okay, I promised the realtor that I would wait until I heard from her. While we were standing there, she called me and she, she said, I have an offer, don't sell your house yet. She knew that I was also talking to the neighbors about this. Um, she said, I have an offer for you at 540. And I looked at my neighbors and they looked at me and they kind of said, okay. So I said to the realtor, come on over. The shortage of available existing homes for sale is very real. At the end of 2019, there were 66 homes available for sale. In May 2021, those numbers had dropped to a minuscule 13 houses on the market. That kind of competition and demand means buyers and sellers need to take time to understand what the market will look like. And Foster Boleyn says some of her clients have unrealistic ideas about what will happen when it comes time to buy or to sell. Because if their expectations are that they're gonna, you know, have a lot of foreclosures in the market, we don't, you know, we don't at this point in time. Um, or if they think that they're gonna come in and, and have serious negotiations that go back and forth for four and five days, that's just very, very rare that that's gonna happen. Houses are selling in a day. So a lot of it is setting the correct expectations about what the market looks like, how to negotiate, what kind of price you should expect to pay. Um, and for the sellers, what does it look like when you get 10, 15, 20 offers on a house? How do we manage that? How do we decide? Potential home buyers who can't find an existing house on the market increasingly have decided to build new. John Cook says he and his fellow builders are eager to meet the demand, but the timelines have become a lot longer to build a new house. If we sign a contract today to when somebody's moving in is easily 13, 14 months, easily. And these are semi-custom homes. The custom home builders, if they're booked out, are much, much further out than that. They're probably looking at more like closer to two years before a client moves into their house. The view from the realtor's perspective agrees. I also see a lot of people looking at new construction differently than they have before, and an uptick in people wanting to build. So lot purchases, land purchases have definitely accelerated in the last, I would say, six to nine months. The data compiled by the Teleco Village Marketing Department confirms what everyone has been talking about. Residential property values declined sharply from 2007 to 2013, but a marketing program launched in 2012 has been part of a huge increase in property values in the last eight years, an increase since 2013 of nearly 23 percent. A decade ago, the average time it took to sell an existing home took as long as eight months. In today's market, that time has shrunk to slightly less than two months. The residential growth rate was a minuscule 1.7 percent just seven years ago, but has jumped sharply since 2017 to over 4.6 percent in 2020. Teleco Village has now reached 70 percent of build-out. However, not all the remaining vacant lots are buildable, so you can judge from those numbers how long it may be before we lock the gates. Builder John Cook. We can sell all the homes we want to sell. It's just, can we get them built? Um, and it's, it's hard as a builder, it's, you have a tendency to say yes too much. And so if you say yes too much, then you're going to disappoint a lot of folks. New resident Dan Miracle moved with his wife from Florida. His house has taken an extra two months to complete from start to finish. And he acknowledges the COVID pandemic has been a key reason why. But a lot of that was all COVID related and supply chain related with things like trusses, which took about an extra 30 days for the builder to secure. Um, and then there's just been some other things because the uh, 
when one thing gets backed up to his subcontractors and things, it's kind of snowballs and so it becomes difficult to um, just keep everything um, moving like you might like, like to. John Cook says the material shortage is very real. We've had suppliers run out of OSB, they've run out of studs, they've run out of beams to build roof systems. If you can think of it, it's been short or the lead time's been long. At one time, our windows were on an 18-week lead time. In our organization, it takes 20 weeks to build a home. 18-week lead time on windows. You can't put windows in two weeks before you close a home. It might not be obvious to home buyers, but the COVID pandemic means there's a lot of competition between builders to get the relatively scarce lumber and other fundamentals needed to build a house. Building materials and supplies right now are in scarce uh, supply. So most of our uh, materials that we use are on allocation. That means our suppliers only get so much of any given product during a month. And then uh, on that, they're determining who, which builder they're gonna send that to. So if you have a really good relationship with your supplier and you pay on time and all those sorts of things, you can get materials. If you don't buy a lot, um, if you're relatively new to them or you have a history of not paying on time, you're gonna have a really hard time getting materials. The slowdown to get a new home built or even to close on an existing home has frustrated many a buyer and seller here in Teleco Village. The primary slowdown is taking place at banks, where the people who approve loans have been stretched to the limit by demand and slowing down the work of appraisers and home inspectors. Really where we see the crazy uptick in numbers is with lenders. So they've had a double whammy, which is that they have a lot of people wanting to refinance because interest rates are amazing. And so what happens is when a lot of people want to refinance and new home sales are still consistent, then you get that double whammy of a ton of extra business for our lenders, which then impacts our appraisers. So if anything has created a little bit of a backlog, it's more our appraisers and our home inspectors who are really trying to keep up with things. The appraisers are in short supply. There's so many appraisals being done. So if someone needs an appraisal for a mortgage, that appraisal is having to be scheduled you know, pretty well in advance. And appraisers want to see the house basically 99% complete. It can be in, you know, it can be dusty, there can be punch items, but it basically has to be done. Yard in, all that stuff. Dan Miracle and his wife were relatively unique and fortunate to have a way to monitor the progress for their home buying and building process. They commuted occasionally from their old Florida home in an RV they owned. A concern for people, especially if you don't live here in the village or in the near area and you're building a home, is uh, how to be keep track of things and stay on top of it and see the progress as the house is being built. For my wife and I, uh, because we did have the RV, we were able to come down and stay in an RV park here, um, not too far from the village, and uh, it allowed us to um, go back and forth. John Cook says the opportunity to sell homes is very strong, but the demand for homes presents challenges. The challenges are the logistics of getting in and out of sites, um, the de dealing with folks for a long period of time. We're, we're writing contracts that we won't start the homes for 8, 10, 12 months. So, you know, we have a long lead time and managing expectations during that time, also managing price increases during that time. Um, is pretty challenging. Erecting a new house in Teleco Village is not necessarily a simple task for builders. Most of the building that we're doing is on infill lots, which means there's homes on either side of it. The streets in Teleco Village are narrow. Um, the shoulders are, are, are small. Um, and as builders, we're asked, you know, we can't block a mailbox, obviously. Not, we can't block driveways. Um, and to build a home in a, in a, in a good amount of time, a good amount of time for us as a builder uh, and a good amount of time for the client that they can move in requires us to have multiple vehicles there at the same time. The demand for housing has also affected the existing homes market in recent months. The result is that the inspection process is leading to some contracts that never get executed, never reach closing, and that puts homes back on the market, says realtor Shannon Foster Boleyn. We have a lot of buyers that are buying sight unseen so they are able to terminate deals in the course of home inspection 
and that is something that we see a lot of properties coming back on the market um, and it's not necessarily that something's wrong with the house it could just be a little bit of buyer's remorse um, we have seen some financing fall through due to low appraisals um, so mostly I would say appraisals have kept up with the pace of demand much better this time around than they did when we came out of the recession. As you likely have read and heard, finding employees to fill construction trades jobs has been especially difficult. Primarily you're looking at things like masonry, uh, framing, um, roofing. Those things are very tough to get um, enough trades to and we're can, we keep adding them. Uh, concrete, I mean there's just a number of them where we keep trying to add more, um, more help in that area. The, the challenging part for our trade contractors is even if they're hiring, especially with some of the things that have been done around the pandemic and stimulus and stuff, they can't hire the help that they need. So my plumber would hire somebody today. My HVAC um, installer would hire someone today. And, I, and when I say someone, they may be even willing to hire more than one. Uh, there's not a single company that we work with right now that if, a, if an able-bodied, qualified individual wanted to come to work that wouldn't hire them. And they just, job ads don't do anything. They can't hire them, they, just, they don't exist. And builders nationwide are facing huge price increases for materials. With everybody building, we're gonna build 1.6 to 1.8 million housing units um, across the U.S. this year. And we're only, four, we're only planning for 1.2. So there's way more demand than there is supply. And so the prices of materials have gone up significantly. Most new home sales come with a fixed price contract. And with the current environment of volatile supplies and prices for materials, that represents huge financial risk for builders. So for us as a set price builder, where we, when we sign a contract, that contract is for a set amount of money. We're, we're, we're having to, to guess and or gamble and just hope we've, we've left ourselves enough room for what prices may be um, because we can't increase our price to the client, to the client if those price increases are more than we expected. There have been some fears expressed by current and longtime village residents that the growth in recent years has strained the capacity of amenities, such as the wellness center and meeting spaces in the village. But Teleco Village Marketing Director Beth Kuberka says that simply is not happening. As people age in place, they quit using the amenities as much and the new people are the one using it. So it's almost like we don't see a big growth in amenities, like in recreation, and okay. Simon and them have been tracking that. We don't see a huge spike in memberships because you're always losing and replacing at the, almost at the same rate. Can Teleco Village be expanded in the future beyond its current borders? Theoretically, the answer is apparently yes, but Kaburka says it's not likely to happen. And currently, the developer, Cooper Communities, Inc., still holds several acres in developer reserve. They could choose to develop that in the future, but currently, as far as we know, there are no plans to do so. These are the sounds of a success story. Teleco Village, in the midst of a building boom, with the beauty of the lakes and mountains of eastern Tennessee, attracting new residents from near and far. Help me! Help! Help me! Thank you. No problem.